So when we really dig deep into it, we find also that The Simpsons seems to be like the futuristic prediction channel for whatever Freemasonry and these secret societies are going to do next. And there's a reason for that. It's actually encoded within the word Simpsons. Who are the Simpsons? Who are the Sims? The Sims are, according to even your, uh, the literature that you could read all over the internet, is the Jews or the Arabs, but really more specifically the Jews. Now, this is not a time to get into the racial war, but this is just showing you that even CNN, which is an abbreviation for Canaan, is actually a derivative of the cabal. The cabal represents itself as being Canaanites, represents itself as being Semites, and is heavily involved in the implementation of the Abrahamic traditions and fulfilling the prophecies that are attached to the Abrahamic traditions. So Simpson actually means the son of a Semite. So what you see going on is you see the Sims basically being the platform that's used to give you the predictions of what the Semites say that they're going to do next. Now, there's another deep connection between the Semites, the Jews and the Arabs, etc., in ancient lore and history, especially when it comes to deeper things like spirituality. And what that connection is, is that obviously they are fighting back and forth over control and dominion of the people. And you have two chief gods in this tense, it's Allah and Jehovah, that are going back and forth in these battles, but they're really more of groups of people that are looking to control the populace with these religious and dogmatic cultures, okay? So what you get, and let me just take a brief moment here so you can understand this, is you get this Abrahamic tradition, which is really rife with many things. It's rife with serpent worship. It's rife with sorcery. It's rife with uh, uh, murder, killing, dualism, uh, racism. So you see that all throughout the Bible. And those who haven't seen it yet, it's just because you've been blinded by this blinded God who causes consistent conflict. So this conflict going on between the Jews and the Arabs is actually manifesting because what we're calling Arab today is really more of the Oriental or the ancient Orients, which you would see as the Moroccans, which you would see as the Kemetans, you would see as the Nagus. So what you have going on is actually where you get guys that are Kabbalistic priests like Jimmy Levine, uh, uh, Lyre Cohen, that have actually started up... Um, a coven, that's the good word for it. They've started a coven and they're using the African-Americans or those of African or melanated descent to actually begin to continuously lead all the people, not just black people, but all the people astray with their talents. So that's what the music industry is. So when they get people to sign these contracts or they get these guys to sign these contracts, these contracts are bound by spells. That's what the language is about. It's about spells. That's why they call it spelling. So these contracts are bound by spells. They're made with a specific paper, generally linen and cotton. It's parchment. And then when a person signs this contract, they get the two-dimensional imprint of that person onto this contract that basically says they're now initiated and now affiliated by their own admittance with this cabal. So whether they know everything that's going on with it or not, which most of them don't, I mean, how many people have high levels of spiritual knowledge? You don't actually start seeing what these people are really involved in until you do something like go into eBay and say occult books and then sort them by the most expensive book. And then go to the top, click on that, get the pictures and start looking at the darkness in which they practice because it's about bringing up infernal entities. It's about cutting people off from their ancestors. It's about doing basically the disarray that's going on in the world today so that they can be rulers of the world. They want someone to serve them. That's what a sorcerer is. They're not in service to other people like what a shaman or a medicine man is. So understand the difference. So the second thing that you have to understand is that this back and forth that's going on between the Jews and the Arabs, or the Jews and more specifically the African Americans, is that they've been following, let's say, the African American or those of melanin descent and preying on them like uh, vampires or, or, or uh, mosquitoes since leaving up out of the Levant. And they've pursued them all the way to the United States, which you already know the Moors were in the United States first. I mean, there was a lot going on with the trade routes with the Native Americans, which were really coming from Anchor Wat. So there's a lot of history of basically a back and forth war. And this is coming to us as the Crusades. OK, because they're still out there fighting the Crusades now. It's still uh, Arabs versus basically what they say is Americans. But it's really 
more specifically, the Knights Templar and the secret societies attempting to take control over the Middle East and could take control over the world. It's just not one specific area. So that's why there's these toppling of world leaders. Now, I'm not saying one person's right and this is whose side you should be on. I'm just giving you the, all the information that's necessary for you to divine for yourself what's really going on. Now, many people don't actually know what Baphomet is, but what it is is the corruption of even the word Muhammad. Baphomet means, in their terminology, the, the force in that which, in which unites all men, the wisdom or the force in which unites all men under one coven or one group. And I, I can't even get into the details. It takes us for a whole nother recording, if we're planning on keeping this even down to 30 minutes, of exactly how much is gone on in history with this particular coven of men who are praying and worshiping a dark lord along with the witches, the warlocks, etc. Now, it may sound a little Harry Potterish to you, but it's something that they really do and something that they really get into. And it's been going on for thousands of years, possibly even longer than that. So what this is really about is this is about getting people into the affiliation with the entity that they're worshiping. And that's what those contracts do. And this entity is so prominent within the high levels of the occult, it actually comes out as a terminology as who trained individuals such as Pythagoras, individuals such as Apollonius of Tyana, individuals such as Simon Magus, even people such as Jesus, and all the, the sorcerers and practitioners of the time in that specific club, which is the Order of the Melchizedek, and all the rest of what they rolled into that, have been practicing this level of magic, and it's a long lineage of magic, and much of what they have, they've taken from Kemet and from Angkor Wat and from different cultures that understand how to use tones, vibrations, and many other things in order to resonate and connect with ancestral energies to gain the information in the memory of the ancestors, okay? So so instead, what they're doing with it is they're using the knowledge to enslave people on multiple levels, create the technologies and things that you see today, which are not really technologies compared to what we had back in the old day. So that gives you a really brief history of what goes on in the cabal, who they're worshiping, and how deep it really goes into. You're going to have to do your own research, and we'll have probably one specific show just about that, so that way you can get all the pieces. One of the also major pieces that you need to know, and I just won't leave you hanging like that, is that the Knights Templar are actually the banksters, meaning that after the last crusade, when the Catholics lost the crusade, they had hired these Knights Templar to guard the passage from the Holy Land for the the pilgrims who wanted to basically go and infest the area that belonged to the Arab tribes. And they wanted to continuously weed themselves in and graft themselves onto this tree with this fake ass religion that they've had since day one, and them trying to get people to bow down and worship them. Even the terms Lord and those kind of terms are still used in Great Britain and things today to describe normal men. So if someone says my Lord, they're not necessarily talking about someone that's in heaven or someone that's on high or someone that's actually, um, ascended or, or, or resurrected themselves. They're talking about someone who's over there in a castle that demands that you worship them because they're sorcerers. So that's more of what you're dealing with. So when you get deeper into it, what you find is, once again, that they've designed this banking system because during the times of the pilgrimage, if you walked in, into the areas of the Holy Land, they said they have bodies hundreds of bodies stacked up of uh, Orthodox Christians and Christians and Catholics that were trying to get into the Holy Land and make the pilgrimage to see where Jesus had been born and all the different stuff that they had been fed and the marauders, the assassins, and all the rest of the people that were on those trade routes, generally of Arab descent, and even the Templars were robbing these people for all their jewels. So problem, reaction, solution, the Templars end up creating what we know today as the modern bank, which is a system to where in the areas in which are protected by their four fortresses, you can bring your goods, which generally start to the major countries that everyone was coming from. You can bring your, your money, and then you can, have, you can store your money there, and then they'll give you a card or a chip or what we call a check. That's where we get our word from. And that check could then be taken when you get deeper into the whole, closer to the Holy Land, to these fortresses in order to get money for you to continuously make your pilgrimage, rather than carry all the money on you and get robbed and get killed. So this was a real thing. In addition to that, because the Knights Templar were not directly related to the Catholics, but actually more related to something much more darker than what even the Catholics were involved in, they were actually like hired guns for the Catholics. So what ended up happening Happening was that Catholics granted them, the Catholic Church granted them the ability to actually begin to charge interest. 
And this is the, the major thing because nobody was actually able to charge interest. It was known as a sin. Even in Islam today, you cannot charge interest because it is a predatory way of putting another person in debt. So the Knights Templar were the first ones to really uh, have interest. They were the first ones to really start banks and have this banking system. And on top of that, they began to lend money. They became one of the most fine. They became the strongest financial support for Christianity as we know it today. And they also began to lend money to many of the kings and royal people of that time and the, and so many people were in debt to the Knights Templar in addition the Knights Templar were seen like warrior priests and it's more like the X-Men that we have today the the lure that surrounded who the Knights Templar were many people actually wanted to join this particular cult even many kings were denied joining the Knights Templar but those who did join they obviously accepted the ones who had great wealth and one of the, the things that you needed to do in order to be accepted into the Knights Templars you needed to sign a contract that all this wealth was going to go to them that they no longer you were a monk you didn't need any of this money anymore you you could no longer affiliate with women. You couldn't even kiss your own mother and sister. So this gives you an idea of what was really going on because they talk about it. You can go look at it on your own. The homosexual activities, the bestiality, the, the rituals, the spitting on the cross, and basically everything that you can think of that's inverted because behind the scenes, they're operating another one of those systems to where they can get the entire world in debt so they can sell their soul to this banking system because the Templars temple was the bank okay so that gives you a good insight of who the templars were who the cabal is who the, the Jewish side, the Semites really are, and why also they utilize those that are melanin dominant because they understand that the melanin is something that attracts others. And so you see it today in the music industry, in the sports industry, soccer, soccer fast, uh, 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 baseball, any kind of sport. And again, it's not just melanated people, but they do prey on the melanated. The melanated are still in streets, grottos, brainwashed, I mean, think about what's really happening here. It's written right on the wall. But see, this involves all of humanity. And that's why it's important, I felt today, for me to get on here and tell everyone what exactly happened to Prince and what exactly is really going on so that way people can get more clarity about the situation because they're going to start seeing things in the future. But knowing is half the battle. So if you want to prepare yourself, your mind, your body, and your soul to do what you need to do in order to be able to be fortified and strengthened truly, not by some dogmatic tradition, not by some Germanic god named Gud in the sky, but the power that you possess within yourself, black, white, Asian, whatever your color may be, collapsing the prism and getting back into the totality of yourself is what we're all about. And we're engaged. This is not all oh, namaste, only love and light. This is darkness, evil and wickedness going about the land. So as the divine masculine, if we're just going to sit here and act like nothing's going on, especially if we know something, then we're fools. But also if we're going to attack them with this, the, even if you can pull the greatest weapon of war, it belongs to them. So this is about working on an entirely different level in order to neutralize an issue that we've had preying on us for thousands of years.